Hello, and I hope you're having a meaningful Holy Week. A couple of comments, just as a reminder. In the past, we have had nightly Vesper services, and this year, because of the pandemic, we're unable to do so. However, we are posting on YouTube these videos for your devotion and consideration. And so we are going through Holy Week examining the events of Jesus' last week before his death and burial, and before we experience the good news of Easter and his resurrection. Our service, our devotional, our Vesper service, has three parts. We'll read scripture, we will hear a devotional, and we'll close with prayer. May God be with us in this time. First, a reading for this Monday during Holy Week, beginning with the 12th verse of the 11th chapter of Mark's Gospel. Listen for the word of our Lord. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing the distance in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again, and his disciples heard it. Then they entered into Jerusalem, and he entered into the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it into a den of robbers. And when the chief priest and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him. For they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, if you say to this mountain, Be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Whenever you stand praying, forgive, and if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Again, they were walking in Jerusalem, and as he was walking by the temple, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders came to him and asked, By what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? And Jesus said to them, I will ask you a question instead. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? Answer me. They argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say, then why do you not believe him? But they shall say of human origin, they were afraid of the crowd for all regarded John as truly a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. God bless the reading of this word. Amen. I'd like to focus on just a few of the verses that are in this particular passage. The 11th chapter of Mark, verses 15 through 19. It's the story where Jesus cleans the temple. Now, we believe as Christians that Jesus is the Son of God, the personification of perfection, the model of excellence, yet we know he got angry. Jesus got as mad as any normal person can get. 
so mad that he drove out money changers and the thieves from the temple. Let Jesus' full humanness simmer within you for a few moments. Jesus didn't get mad when he didn't get his way. Jesus didn't get mad when he was hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Jesus didn't get mad when someone stepped on his ego, pride, or vanity. These were not the reasons for Jesus' anger on this day. Jesus got mad because he saw injustice and irreverence. He got mad when people charged inflated prices for sacrificial animals. We learn from this story that Jesus was angry with folks who didn't treat the temple with sacredness and reverence and treated people poorly as well. We can learn that Jesus was angry with folks who didn't treat people with the sacredness of their worth. While Jesus clearly understood that God is not the temple, he still venerated the temple as his father's house. I believe Jesus wants our church to be a house of prayer for all nations and all peoples. Jesus wants our worship to be a time of prayer and praise. Jesus wants us to be dedicated to prayer. Prayer to God, prayer with God, and prayer in the presence of God. Jesus wanted his Father's house to be a place of prayer. To be honest, we can visualize Jesus becoming blazing hot with his anger, overturning tables of the money changers, and driving the sellers and their dirty sacrifices from the temple. Can we visualize Jesus becoming blazing hot because the money changers and the sellers were disrespecting and devaluing the people of God? Let's consider. People traveled great distances to come to the temple and to worship, only to be taken advantage of at the very place that they were to pray. I believe Jesus had righteous anger. There's always a time and a place for righteous anger. If you recall, Abraham Lincoln was angry at slavery. That's righteous anger. Martin Luther King Jr. was angry at racial discrimination. That was righteous anger. Nelson Mandela was angry at apartheid in South Africa. That is an excellent example of righteous anger. God wired us to become angry whenever we see evil and injustice. There is righteous anger, which is good, and there is unrighteous anger, which is bad. I sense we get angry too often, too quickly, way too much, and many times over the wrong things. We throw temper tantrums when we don't get our way, when people bruise our ego, and when other people have different ideas and ways about how things should run. That's unrighteous anger, and it's a form of anger that is sinful. In today's scripture, Jesus was angry at injustice, the dishonest dealing of the money changers, and irreverence, their lack of respect for God and the people of God. But this isn't the end of the story about Jesus' anger. I find myself suspicious that many of the same people selling goods at the temple on Monday were watching Jesus crucified on Friday. But instead of calling down fire upon them, Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Like those sinners, we don't know what we're doing. How the money changers justified themselves and their practices. Listen to some of the words that they may have used in their self-righteous justification. We provide a valuable service to the temple. We're helping these travelers keep the law. If they don't like our prices, they should be better prepared when they come. We are here more than they are. This is the way it has always been done. 
A fool and his money are soon parted. They don't have to come here. Can you hear the them and us in these justifications? While we may not agree with every one of these justifications, just one agreement places us alongside the thieves and robbers at the temple. When we value buildings, rules, and money more than we love people, then we are no better than the thieves and robbers using the temple for their advantage. When we focus on what we do instead of what Jesus did, we are no better. When we divide up into us and them in whatever form is convenient for the moment or the day or the year, we miss the point of Jesus. And we rightly deserve his full anger. But instead of calling down fire, Jesus prays for you and for me in the same words, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. I take great comfort that Jesus does not wash his hands of anyone. Instead, he continues to love us and offer us grace. Jesus leaves the righteous this up to us. Just as Jesus gives judgment to one, he gives judgment to all. And as we read this story of the money changers, we should take it to heart and know that Jesus is angry with us. But I also take more comfort in that Christ offers pardon to us. And as he pardons one of us, he offers pardon to us all. And we can accept and live as his disciples. Let us pray. Holy God, we separate ourselves from you as we separate ourselves from your people. In various ways, we try to justify our sin even when we attempt to do right, we can do so for the wrong reasons. Pray for us and teach us new ways of discipleship. Help us to look at the hearts and minds rather than brick and mortar. Help us see people rather than law. O righteous God, accept us and lead us into true righteousness so we may love others as Christ loves us. This we humbly ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May this week be holy for you. And may all of us feel renewed as we prepare our hearts in this week. As we go through the teachings of Jesus, some of which are harsh and others are comforting. May we know that Jesus is present with us. This is my prayer for you and with you. May God bless you. Amen.